Okay. Okay. Oh, shoot. And of course, I left my paper downstairs when I ran down. So, um, I'm just going to wing it. Now that we're connected, I'm not going to uh, run off anywhere. Which means, um, those of you who were on the conference call yesterday, here, I'm trying to get so that my eyes are not completely black circles, but oh well. Um, those of you who were on the conference call yesterday, if I leave anything out, uh, or if I say anything wrong, please feel welcome to, uh, correct me. And, hmm. Nope, there is no way for me to be anything but, like, the deep, dark black eyes, which is actually kind of cool because um, there's uh, sacred souls, if you go to very divine souls that are pure energy that come to us from other dimensions or collectives, a lot of times they look like white with black, black eyes because that's where all the, a lot of the, and black mouth because and their energy is coalesced there and it comes out super black so <laughs> it's cool that my eyes are like super black now because it makes me look like a divine being even though like <laughs> that's sort of a trick-or-treat <laughs> concept in this moment um so yesterday um uh, a bunch of us uh, seers, prophets, people who receive messages. We had a conference call um, in which we shared all of our messages. Uh, we also shared like how our connections and skills have been shifting over the past um, recent months to the past year. And, um, and we shared like we found that while, yes, indeed, when I say I've been getting dire messages, I've been getting the most dire, but other people had lighter, more loving versions of the same message. So when we all put it together, um, we got a, a pretty good, more balanced um, uh, vision. Oh black cat showing his butt to you. <laughs> um, so I want to start with um, as long as I've been alive in this life, as you guys know, I've had a full connection and memory of all my lives, which is not as like awesome as it sounds. It's not like I walk around 24 seven in full connection with every life. It's like having an amazing uh, library in your house, but you're not reading every book at every time. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, my brother and sister and I used to go into the Akashic library, like pretty much daily when we were kids. Um, and we were very comfortable just walking through dimensions, which is sort of like a Sasquatch kind of thing. Um, so it shouldn't be a surprise that I had this skill since over the last uh, few years I've been working more and more increasingly with Sasquatch, um, not by my connection to them, they've been connecting to me, for which I'm very grateful. Um, so a lot of us over the past like year have been finding our connections and our skills have been sort of shifting around or expanding. I've had people contact me going, Benita, this is crazy. Normally I'm an evidential medium, but suddenly aliens and collectives are coming and talking to me. Um, or Benita, normally I'm an angelic healer, but suddenly people who passed are coming and talking to me. Like many of us, our um, connections are, hey, no biting the hand that pets you. He is a biter. You got to watch your hand with this guy. Um, so many of us have been feeling shifts anyway. And on top of that, um, you know, we've been hearing for some time with the world's Schumann resonance 
changing and with everyone opening up in new ways, we've been seeing uh, some people, and I'm not going to name names here because we're all shifting. So if someone's going through this one month, the next month they might be on the other side of it. So, uh, and some of us may been, have been like going through this in moments ourselves. Uh, people who are not being 100% true to themselves and connecting with absolute love, people who are not doing their due diligence of energy uh, maintenance within themselves, are we're all finding, not all, a lot of us, that our connections are going a little higher more easily. And if you don't have like a solid base of energy to support it, you can find yourself shooting really high up and you're like, oh my God, I'm amazing. But then you can't stay there. You can't sustain it. So you're finding some people who were teachers are suddenly trying to bring all of their students in to give them the energy to go up. So instead of teaching their students how to go up with them, they're in some ways repressing, demeaning, putting down their students so that the students will stay down as a support unit so that the teacher can go way up basically vampiring their energy so um we're seeing a lot of shifts and um it's really really important that we do stay grounded connected to earth but also build our structure to go up as high as we can uh for that purpose every saturday um morning at 11 and every Wednesday evening at 7.30, I'm doing free skill development classes. Saturday mornings are uh, about exercises to work your energy center so you can be a stable structure to support your work and your connections. And Wednesday nights are about how to read different ways of receiving messages. These are all free because um, we need all of us to do this. Um, now is the time for us to come together, right? Right. It's all about coming together with love. Now we've all been hearing as this planet is going through its shift, uh, and suddenly here it is the shift that those with the higher frequency are the ones that are going to really survive. What the librarians are saying to me is, um, common sense and high frequency. Uh, there are some people like Mother Teresa who could walk among the very ill and not catch her, their illness. But um, until you can be of a frequency so pure as Mother Teresa, uh, it's best to be common sense and protective. Um, at the same time, we want to keep the purity and the love. Our goal is for like, um, yeah, Gina, please join in on the classes. All of you guys, this is for all of us. And, you know, the, uh, the librarians have mandated me to teach all of this. And I said, I can only do that if I'm not charging so that it's from love. You know, it's all, hey. This cat is trying to like attack me. What a shock. <laughs> uh, so it's all love across the board, all love everywhere. So we're growing our mandala of love with uh, strength and power and integrity. So um, the, as I was saying, since I was a child, you know, I see people's life paths. It took me many years to get used to that. Those of you who can see life paths know that like, I it made me a great teacher because I could see like where someone magnetically was being drawn to go and what natural skills they had waiting for them. So it made me a great teacher and mentor when I was a chef. Like I'm really proud of all the people who came into my kitchen as like an hourly dishwasher or line cook and uh, left my kitchen to become chefs and food service directors and, you know, move up to corporate management even. So this cat is very jealous. He needs to go over my shoulder so he can get the love he needs. Um, but when you see people's life paths, 
you're always seeing where they are now, which is how they see themselves and where their goal is, where they want to be. And if your expectation of them is to be at their goal, you can't. They can only be where they are now. That's why I'm always telling people, you can only ever connect at the lowest common denominator, right? If two people are in a relationship and one of them is just full of joy and love and the other one is like depressed and angry, the depressed, angry level is where you will connect. There's no way to raise someone up unless they raise themselves up. That's just the way it is. Now, if they want to raise themselves up, you can support and encourage them. You know, that's where therapy and caregiving and all that is. But you cannot force someone to be against what they are. Um, and this is the same with working with people when you see their life path. And it's the same with Earth. Earth has a life path. And uh, since I was a child, I've seen Earth's life path in the past, in the future, and around uh, six to eight other timelines um, that of where we could have been at the moment. Um, and some of you know, sometimes I hop timelines a little bit and it gets a little confusing. Um, so looking at Earth's life path, since I was a child, I've seen a time where Earth goes into like war and pestilence and you know, uh, governments crumbling and, you know, just like Mad Max kind of scenario. I've always seen that, but I assumed it was like way in the future. But on the other side of that, I see everyone returning to Earth connection and um, reharmonizing with the planet, reharmonizing with animals and nature. And that's when a global renaissance occurs, where we team our modern technological skills with the harmony of the planet. So I've always seen this. I just assumed it was way in the future. Um, and then a month ago, five weeks ago, I guess five weeks ago, I woke up in the morning and I was doing my meditation and I realized what I saw way in the future was around me. Like I was in a round room and it was being projected on all the walls around me. I was like, oh, we're here now. Ugh, that sucks. That was like my exact thought. And that's when uh, certain things happened where I was told to contact certain people and check certain things. And there was a lot of weird coincidences that let me know I was on the right path with this. Um, Uma, uh, Alexandra, Beepat, and I did a live stream, I guess like a month ago, sharing our visions of all of this. And what hit me was Uma's visions were so much more loving and peaceful and quick resolution. And mine were like doom, disaster, global destruction. Uh, but when we put our visions together, we realized she was seeing the best case scenario. When everyone comes together in total love and harmony, then uh, this is what could happen. And by the end of May, the whole world will be clean and healthy again. And what I was seeing was if no one comes together in love and harmony. Oh, Cheryl, yeah, I go into other dimensions all the time. And on Wednesday nights, that's something I'll be teaching. So, you know, join in on the Saturday, 11 a.m. and Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. live classes here on my Facebook page. And you will learn to do that, too. I, I would love for everyone to, like, be able to take the skills that I've spent a lifetime honing and multiple lifetimes and, you know, grow with them. I would love that. So um, we realized that we were seeing the same thing, but with different uh, variations on the outcome. And um, it hit me, this is exactly like any life challenge. We've all seen it, whether it's a plant challenge or something that comes and hits you out of the blue. If you, um, is the wind too much for you guys? Can you hear me or is the wind too loud? Um, let me know if you need me to go inside if it's too windy, okay? So 
as you go through life and you're hit with a challenge, you are not done with the challenge until you are emotionally neutral to it. So if someone comes and does something horrendous to you and you're like, I'm trying to forgive, I'm trying to get over it, you are, oh, thanks, Mary, you are still in the challenge. And when you say, well, I've forgiven this person, but I just, it's best if I don't ever connect with them because it's too painful, you are still in the challenge. It's only when you look back and you say, wow, I got through that. I'm back in my state of love and harmony. And when I think of this person, I don't really have any response at all. I'm neutral to them. And, you know, good luck to them with their life challenge because they've sure made things harder on them. But that's them and their challenge. I'm on my path with my challenge. When you get to that point, then your next challenge will be right there going, hello, I'm ready for you. Of course, not all life challenges are mean or horrible. Some of them are quite nice. So Earth right now is going through a challenge. And the challenge is not the coronavirus. The challenge is humanity and our total disrespect for Earth. The coronavirus is, of course, a result, one of the symptoms of what happens. You know, just like... Um, if you go out drinking too much and the next day you're hungover, the hangover isn't the challenge. The challenge is don't go out drinking so much and get a hangover, you know, or whatever other challenge. You know, the challenge might be uh, build up an alcohol resistance so you don't get a hangover or learn to live with hangovers. I don't know. Um, but, you know, Earth is going through a life challenge and the challenge is to be in harmony and humans are the one species on our planet that is out of harmony with the rest of it so the way we humanity help earth to become in balance again is to harmonize with what earth needs we all know what earth needs it's not rocket science earth needs us to stop destroying the planet um so but the best way for us to get through this is through love, through harmony, through being together with each other, which is what Uma was seeing. And what I was seeing is that's not going to happen because most people are generally kind of, you know, selfish and ignorant and obnoxious. And so what I saw was, you know, the other side. And we're seeing that on the planet, the countries that are going... Uh, you know, getting through this in harmony and common sense and proactive care, you know, like Greenland are doing well. And the countries where there aren't that many people and they're kind of spaced out so they're not infecting each other are doing pretty well. Uh, the countries like the U.S., we're not doing so well. So we're, our country is learning its lesson the hard way what we each as individuals can do is learn our lesson and just stay in hiding you know follow your common sense i've posted videos in the past uh i posted a video yesterday on what i'm doing nutritionally to keep our immune system healthy so if the virus comes near it's like ah, that's too much effort i'm gonna go to this other person uh i'm doing uh, i mean that's not gonna happen it just my body will be better at not getting sick, if my cardiovascular is in good shape, if I'm strong and healthy, if I'm nutritionally sound, and what we're doing for protective gear. Uh, you guys seen pictures of me. My, my sister calls me grocery Vader with my helmet and my everything. So, um, you know, use your common sense. Be sanitary, be safe. When the government says we don't need to wear face masks, I told you guys five weeks ago, that's nonsense. Protect yourself. Protect the germs from getting at you. Um, now, for visions of the future, I'll tell you, last September when I was at the um, Love is Always the Answer, you're right, Ariel. Yes. Um, Last September, when I was at a Vipassana retreat, I was getting visions of my soul and what my soul is doing. Not at the start of the retreat, like towards the end of it when, 
you know, I was able to hold my entire being in my mind for 20, 30 minutes at a time without losing focus, that's when the good vision started happening. Um, and I'll say, you know, I'll post another video on how to turn your quarantine into a Vipassana retreat for yourself because it is absolutely amazing. So, um, well, it won't be a Vipassana retreat because that's very specific and, but, you know, <laughs> to, to get some good juice out of, uh, out of this alone time. So anyway, um, my soul came to me, not my human soul, but my original soul. My human soul was there too, but we saw what my original soul is up to. As you guys know, I'm like a, a renegade soul, a rogue spark. Um, I left the cone of inception before I was able to complete my frequency maturation and be collected by whatever race of beings I was supposed to become uh, one of. And I ran off and I spent, you know, timeless time hanging out going here, going there, hanging out with this race, hanging out with that race. So I, I'm like connected with pretty much every race of being that ever existed in every dimension and every frequency. Uh, the question for me was always, um, why in this lifetime do I have, did I always have memory of that? And you know, now we know why, <laughs> so I can be useful to you guys. Um, so what I started seeing was the renegade sparks are actually a collective of their own. This was new to me. I, did, I mean, I'm sure my soul knows it, but I in human life didn't know it. The renegade sparks are a collective of their own. And we go out um, and do healing where there's darkness. So I got to go on a ride along with my spark soul. And it was the coolest thing because my spark soul was on the back of this energy dragon. And it would go to a place where there's a lot of like darkness. And um, I had an army of angels. You know how like you see angels with their swords upraised and you're, uh, you're like, why are angels running around like in an army? It's um, cord cutting. It's not actually a sword, it's energy that they're holding. We just see it as a sword. But when they touch you with it, you remember who you are in your core being. So no matter how dark you are, all the darkness falls away and you return to your pure state of light. However, you have all the memory and the skills and experience of that with you, but now in pure light. So I would go into this area of dark and I'll tell you, my spark self is a badass. My spark self is like, has no fear. And my spark self would look around to the area with the worst darkness and go right in it with like maniacal glee, shouting, army of angels to me now and this energy grid of light would open up behind me like wings behind me but they're like energy grid and these angels would come and connect with it and that's how they could go into the darkest areas without becoming corrupt by the energy that it would protected them and so long as they were connected to my energy grid, we were going in and wherever we saw darkness, we were like touching it with our swords of light, our, our beams of light. And all the darkness would fall away, would disappear. And all we had left was light. And we'd go to these like lumps of like coal looking stuff and touch it and it would all fall away. And this light being would unwrap and go, oh, thank you. We've been waiting for you. Here's what's super cool. At least a third of the beings that we returned to light were actually covert angels, covert army angels that would then join with our light grid and join us with the fighting, you know, with, which, I mean, it's not fighting, it's healing. And, um, 
and we would go through and clean large swatches of areas and others that had been caught in it some of them were there by happenstance oh i was out flying around doing my own floaty love thing when suddenly i got grabbed and i was turned into darkness Blah. and others said well you know i was the one of my collective who was selected to use free will to go out there and become eventually a demon so now I'm going back to my collective in my pure state where I will not corrupt my collective, but I bring all of the skills and the knowledge from this. And now we're able to go with our collective and expand our resonance while maintaining the frequency of love, right? So here on earth, what we're calling a war between good and evil in the other dimensions, they're calling it the reclamation. They are reclaiming everyone and returning them to their true state of love. Because remember, everyone, everyone was born through the love of source. Everyone. And if you look at even the most foul demon in the deepest pit of hell, in their core, they have a spark that's still love. So all we are doing is returning everyone to connect with their core. It's so much easier to do outside of 3D life. It's harder here on earth, especially when we don't remember anything. But this is why demons are afraid of angels because angels return demons to their true state. They're no longer demons. It's all about returning to love. So I mentioned this to you because what we're going through on earth now it's there's stuff happening in 3d and there's stuff happening in multi-dimension so in the 3d of course just really protect yourself please really like be safe and sanitary and really um you know make sure your health is good we are going to be in quarantine for another few months without question like this weekend, my, I'm building a greenhouse for my family. I've already got plants started. You see there's some behind me that I bought at the local garden center and I've got other seedlings going. And, um, you know, we have gardens around our house. I'm so lucky that we live in the woods near the river so I can be out walking whenever I want without getting uh, near any other people. Um, I'm very lucky and I know that, but even if you live in an apartment, you can still build a planter box. You know, you may, you know, it's, um, returning to earth is how I'm surviving and how my family will survive. And that is eventually the answer for everyone. So I'll share with you all like what we're doing, however, I'm aware of how blessed we are to live here in, you know, in the woods and that some people have to find other solutions to make that happen and, you know, feel welcome to contact me if you have questions. So, um, about what's happening on earth right now in the 3d physical, in my vision, I see one year from now a quarter of the earth's population will not be alive a quarter of our current population will not be alive now keep in mind if no one comes together in love that's what i'm seeing so the more we see countries coming together in love and of course italy and france there and spain they're all about the love um but it's love and proactive common sense and you know this coronavirus came and it caught everyone by surprise so obviously the, it's not appropriate to point a finger at anyone or blame anyone in any way or to say anyone deserves what they get that's not it no one deserves to go through this uh you know we're, we're hearing the stories and hopefully not seeing the stories in our personal life but it is touching all of us personally i think by now every one of us has friends and loved ones who um have become sick or or died with this um or related now 
what I'm seeing is not just about a quarter of our global population dying from coronavirus. This is just like the tip of the iceberg. It's, um, there's, you know, the, um, statistics of who's dying from coronavirus, but there's also people who it's weakening their immune system. Uh, so they're having heart attacks or pneumonia, people who are not diagnosed with coronavirus, but it's causing their death. People who are denied hospital care or medical care when they need it. So they're dying of other causes. Uh, because of global climate change, uh, the deer ticks this year are at an all time exploded population. So I'm seeing cases in the future where someone survives the coronavirus, has a weakened immune system, and then gets uh, Lyme's disease and dies from that. Um, I'm seeing a lot of natural disasters coming through our planet. Again, because like, the uh, ocean currents are not flowing the way they normally flow. You know, the temperatures are not the way they're supposed to be. We're getting, going to get a lot of tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, tsunamis. And um, much of this will be unpredicted because we don't know how to map the, uh, the global weather patterns because everything is, nothing is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the farmer's almanac is no longer a viable resource, which is unfortunate. Um, so if you are in a town that gets hit by a tornado and the hospitals are packed with coronavirus patients, FEMA is already overwhelmed. You know, like what I'm seeing is a lot of global, you know, death and destruction from a variety of purposes and um, what other people are seeing is more common sense coming into the world and you know countries and people coming together with support and harmony that will turn the tides um, one way or another the only way to get through this pandemic and everything else that's coming is through the world coming together. Also, what I'm seeing are like governments toppling. In my original vision, I saw like a lot of war, revolution, stuff like that. You know, refugees getting tired of, you know, dying on rafts in the ocean and coming together to fight their, uh, their overlords. However, um, what is being shown to me now is a possibility of governments toppling because in order to get through the coronavirus, they need to change their ways. So it could be that it's um, more of a peaceful changing, you know, that are you seeing this? Yeah, if we do not come together, I see the darker stuff, but if we do come together, like say if Biden becomes president in the fall and he starts working with Mexico and Canada on, hey, you know, we need to change things here. And look, Canada and Mexico actually have pretty good systems in place. So let's get all of North America to work as one cohesive unit. You know, so um, <laughs> thank you. I hug and kiss you too, Caitlin Miller from a safe distance. Um, so as we see harmony happening on a political level, we'll see harmony happening on a uh, germ war level. Without question on our planet right now, we have all the resources we need for everyone on our planet to live healthfully and well. So, but so long as the majority of the resources are being hoarded by a minority and others are allowed to languish in you know, squalor, this is not going to happen. So when you start seeing the upper 1%, the upper 10% reaching out and caring for the lowest 10%, the lowest 50%, you'll start seeing shifts and changes. Um, I'll tell you, I want to tell you though, on the other side of all of this, the vision of future earth or what the librarians 
these days the Akashic librarians are with me like 24 7 and I'm so used to being one with them that half the time I'm like in their collective with them because that's the e it's easier for them to like show me things than to download download which is a, a cool way of being is a little um streamlined and they need me to absorb huge chunks so i say this because if any of you work with anyone who gives you messages start in asking them to invite you up to be one with them and share the message you can get a lot more a lot quicker that way than them just like trickling it down into your brain um sorry little add segue there so in future earth or what the librarians now call new earth um I see a time when it's Earth, all humans are in harmony with our planet. All humans have the ability to see other dimensions that um, there's a lot less humans living in 3D form on our planet, but there's a lot more ways to live. It's not the only way. So it's not that our population becomes decimated, it's that we have so many other options that were spread out. Some of the ways I see people living is going through the regular life cycle as we do now, but you have the option to have full memory like I do, or to like shut out certain things, depending on what challenges you're coming for. Other things are, uh, say you're like, you know what, this challenge I need, I only need to be an adult. So I'm gonna come into life at age 24 with this situation into this family that agrees I'm now a member of the family and I'll leave at age 46. And that's the time I need for my challenge. And that's totally in harmony. Um, that some people will come in and say, I don't need to be physical for this challenge. And that's okay, I can interrelate with everyone as a non-physical life. Uh, others, like some of our past lives that may have karma that they're waiting to wrap up uh they can come back and wrap up the karma either as physical or non-physical or many other ways like there's going to be so many ways to be in life we can form mini collectives and just be a blob of energy as a mini collective you know there's just like so many ways and i will i see like the visions of future earth um are like gravity is no longer such an issue so i see like a, a city and in the city and there's tall buildings nature is growing up all along the buildings but it does not harm the building so you have ivy and plants and moss growing but there's an energy layer between the physical structure and the plants so that they're all living off this energy layer without causing damage to the building um, or some houses are like more like yurt kind of things made completely of nature because nature wants to be one with the human experience as much as we want to be one with the nature experience. And my favorite is this vision I have of a city where um, the streets are made of like grass, you know, because there's no cars going back and forth. We're very comfortable with teleportation and other means of transportation. And gravity is not such a thing. So I see these rows of planters near the ground hanging in the air, up, 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 up to very high. And they're like, you know those planters that you line with like Spanish moss? Um, imagine things like that. And there's a cloud above the top planter that does gentle rain going down. But when it hits the bottom, it becomes a cloud of mist that keeps going back up. Um, so everything is like beautifully rained on without getting rain everywhere. And um, if an animal is like feeling like it's time for it to die, it will go and offer itself for whomever wants to eat it. Um, but we're mostly living off energy and, you know, vegetarian lifestyle. Uh, some people don't need to eat anything at all. Um, you know, there's so many ways to exist. So that's what I see for future earth. And what I see us going through now is 
you know, the birthing process. And that's why the quicker we come together in love and harmony, the sooner we'll be able to get from where we are through what we got to go through towards returning to the earth collective and becoming a collective on our own. Um, the librarians, the reason they want me to teach everyone how to do what I do and to do it with a solid energy structure is because one way that we can get from where we are now to a uh, future earth or new earth is um, by manifesting it, law of attraction. And the more of us who can do this together, the more we're helping bring the energy of the future to the present. So that's my game plan with the classes I'm teaching to get us to the point where we can do that together. And the more of us who are in consciousness together and in full focus on this, the better. So um, that's where I hope we're going to because that would be so much nicer than the other stuff I've seen. Now, the one more thing that I want to say, uh, so if you all have any questions, feel welcome to type them in. Um, oh, Caitlin, that's so cool that you've seen that also. Yeah, yeah. So how soon will it happen? It will happen when we come in harmony with Earth and we're in harmony with each other. That's when it will happen. Um, so there's two things I want to mention. The first, so don't let me forget the nine planets. That's really important. But the first thing is, um, like, I am not an evidential medium. My mediumship skills are kind of haphazard, hit or miss. Whenever I talk with people who pass, it's never about, like, grandma, where's your diamond jewelry? Or, you know, I feel bad about this argument or whatever. It's usually almost always about soul contracts, a soul level, because that's the frequency. Hi, Mona. That's the frequency that I resonate on. So I'm not an evidential medium, but the last few months, people who passed are coming and spending a lot of time with me, which has me kind of freaked out a little bit because that's not my comfort zone. Just like my friends who are evidential mediums are suddenly also connecting with angels or aliens. It's like, oh, well, well, I don't know what to do with this. But um, a woman who recently passed came and spoke to me and she said, um, to make a long conversation short, that before planning this life, there were a lot of souls, both human and non-human in origin, who agreed to be on earth at this time to help with this time of healing. And a number of them have agreed to be among those who died. Now, I'm not saying everyone who died agreed to it. That's like wrong. And I would never say that. Um, what I'm saying, it, because some people, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, or, uh, you know, there's so many reasons. And we want to stop, you know, the global death uh, as quickly as we can. However, there are a number of people who agreed to be on earth or a number of souls who agreed to be on earth at this time for the purpose of healing the planet and many of them are planning on dying in the last few years or in the next year and what they're uh showing me she said she's not of human origin and she's a very gentle spirit um so she's been sending love to earth but it's like hit or miss on who even notices it much less utilizes it so when she found a group of souls who were coming to earth to be part of a mandala of energy at this time with global healing that of course they lived their whole lives unaware of she said to them let me join you you guys are all pretty masterful so you guys plan everything you want to do and I'll find my way to fit in. And then she came to earth and she um, connected with all these people. She showed me, she was like, 
crocheting and sewing and weaving her energy into people and places and frequencies and situations and mandalas and networks and then she guaranteed that she died uh early in so now her soul is back up there and she is sending energy down through all these connections she made and it's very impactful she is helping those who are in her group and even beyond that to have an effect on what we're doing now on earth so um so what she asked yes i know it is so kind so kind of her so what she asked me to do is let you guys know that this is happening that uh just like when i see the reclamation with um the angel armies going out and helping darkness turn to light and one third of those souls that they that they touch with their energy rise up and join with them that's also happening here okay so connect with those who passed because whether they were part of that or not they're now up there in another frequency and they're ready to help you know you, many of you have been hearing for a long time that there are entire our planets surrounded by all these spaceships and collectives and all this help in different dimensions and different frequencies and they're here to help but until we connect with them they're not as effectful so start connecting up the um other thing that i've seen is um and i've seen this like my whole life but since september it's made a lot more sense when um so gaia is not just mother earth she is like the mother of all physical reality so everything like up to the fifth dimension that is her creation um and i've talked to you guys about this before i mean i've been talking about this for years that um there was a time when we had many frequencies many dimensions and gaia said let's create physical reality this will be fun um and some of you all who are watching are like, oh yeah, I remember I was there when that happened. Yes, yes, you were. And that's why there's so many of us who are here now because we're like physical reality experts. So um, she has created nine planets in different dimensions. And when each of these nine planets comes together as a collective, then they create a portal where any being of any reality of any frequency can safely and comfortably go to any of these places without losing themselves so that future earth the new earth i'm talking about it all begins with this portal of the nine planets there's um i think what they're showing is like six or seven of the nine planets are like ready but they're from lighter frequencies it was easier for them um earth and one or two others i'm not really sure because to be honest i haven't been tapping into this that much because it's the end result of a lot of work we have to do so i'm more focused on the work but earth because we're 3d reality we're one of the most dense difficult ones and there's another one in a more dense reality that's got a lot like makes us seem like paradise by comparison and um but there's a lot of light healers there and they're having actually uh right now more impact be so anyway sorry sorry i'm so um <laughs> i could go on a whole tangent on what's happening in that planet but each one is in a different frequency or a different reality a different dimension that when all of us come together as a collective every single planet then the nine planets are in alignment that create a portal that will allow anyone of any reality to visit any place of any reality with safety and full connection and this was gaia's plan all along when she decided to create a physical reality so um pretty cool 
I probably sound a little crazy when I talk about this, but whatever. You guys know I'm a little, like, you know, unfiltered anyway. Um, so when I talk about Earth coming together as a collective, this means that each and every one of us is still individual, but we're also in harmony with the total. Um, so everyone will be very empathic and telepathic, but very respectful. It raises our frequency. Um, and if you wonder what it's like to be in a collective, each of us already is because our souls, you know, your soul, my soul is a collective of your core soul, every life you've ever lived, every life, the energy that's waiting to come to life. You are all one, but you're still individuals. So the more you practice connecting with your soul and oneness with yourself, the easier it will be for us to connect with each other as a future collective. Having said that, um, about five or six weeks ago, I started seeing something. I meant to mention this earlier, sorry. Where, um, you know, when I see people, um, my site allows me to, I see their past lives, whatever past lives are with them at the moment. And, you know, if there's an angel or other guardians who are right there or so, um, but only the ones that are connected to you at the moment, um, not the one, not all of them. Although lately I have been seeing a lot of people with all of their past lives with them and that I've never seen before. But now I look at people and I'm like, all of their past lives, wherever I look, I see a human being with all of their past lives and guides, guardians, men, you know, non-physical mentors with them. So I don't know what that means. Um, they're not explaining it to me. And I figure when I'm meant to know, I'll know. But I'm, they probably want me to put together other stuff before. And then I'll be like, oh, it's so obvious. But um, hi, Kim. Hi, in Norway. I, go, I hope you're staying healthy and well and very safe there. Um, so I just wanted to mention that um, because to me, that's weird. <laughs> Everything else, normal, that's weird. Hi, Kitty. So let's see, uh, can the love and healing be done through the nine planets to continue to heal and come back to love? Yes, yes. If you want to meditate on connecting our planet with the other eight planets and helping Gaia and her light collective, her court of divine beings create a portal, that is an excellent meditation. I totally recommend that. And that would be like a really fun place to uh, let your imagination and your spirit, you know, venture to. So yeah, that that's an excellent idea. Um, thank you for saying I don't sound crazy. <laughs> I feel like all I ever sound is crazy, but I can only speak the truth as it flows through me. And if I have been mandated to help others connect with your personal truth and your guides and your guardians and your sight, then I can't really worry about how I sound or I would be, um, you know, uh, oh, here we go. I'm like in the mirror image of myself. So ugh, that's getting on my nerves. Okay. Um, so I guess that is everything I wanted to say. And we've been talking for almost an hour. Um, remember, use common sense, protect yourself. The best way to get through this healthfully is to spend the next few months in isolation, either isolation by yourself or isolation with your family. Like I'm here with my family under one roof so if one of us gets sick, we're going to like kill everyone else off. So we, and we don't want to do that, um, <laughs> obviously. So, you know, the best way to get through this is to really be self-caring on every level. And I'm talking bacterial, physical, psychological, emotional, nutritionally, just really self-care and 
love yourself completely. You are each and every one of you extraordinary souls to even be here at this time and to say, I will survive, I will thrive, and I will spread the frequency of love. Just understand that means you are already forgiven everything you've ever done in your life. Don't even worry about it. And anything that like takes you away from love, just say to it, either you are going to be in me and healed or you can go away. It's your choice because there's only room for love in this vessel. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. I love you all. Um, let's see. Tomorrow is Saturday. 11 a.m. We're going to do uh, connecting with earth energy and root chakra work. And we're going to focus on letting your root chakra connect with your other chakras. So like, how does your heart chakra feel? And now if you bring your root chakra up and support your heart chakra, how does it feel? Okay, let it go. Now resonate with the root chakra. Bring it to your throat chakra. Let it go. Okay, now bring it to your hands. Like, we're going to play with root chakra tomorrow and let the power of Mother Earth just fill us and support every one of our 2,000 chakras in our physical body and the chakras in our sacred anatomy surrounding our body. So, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all and I, I'm just so grateful to be uh, connected to you. So, bye.